Hello everybody, DF here, and we're back with Monster Prom 2, Monster Camp. Okay, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I'm gonna try to go for a Dahlia ending, a regular ending, because she's like the only one of the main six characters that I have not gotten a regular date ending with, going to the meteor shower and all that. So just gonna da da da, da, da. Ugh, not SDF. <laughs> what does SDF even mean? Is it like a sunblock against demons? All right, let's look at this really carefully. Hipster costume. <laughs> yeah. Charm and there we go. That seems to balance things out. All right. If we're going for Dahlia, if you could only listen to one genre of music forever, what would it be? 8 mint, metal, jazz, lo fi, screamo, or pot? I feel like metal's Damien. Um, oh. Or, oh, you like Screamo 2 DF? It's one of my favorite genres. Or I might be doing something different. I want to try to go for Dahlia. Damn it. A lot of people aren't into Screamo because they think it's too angry and satanic. But I mean, I'm a witch and a stressed out one at that. So angry and satanic is kind of soothing to me a lot of the time. Faith made me some cool Screamo mixtapes to listen to while I'm at camp. Maybe we can listen to some of them together. It might not be too late to get Dahlia. Well, let's see where we're going. Well, for now, worry about your stats. On to manner, voice whispers from wild, frightening voice. DF, you can't escape your fate. You'll soon gain boldness, but after that, something weird will happen to you. It could be great or terrible. You don't want something potentially terrible happening to you. You stay put to... Be sure you don't get extra boldness per the voice's prediction. Look at you trying to find a scene itself. Now take some bravery. Here, I have two boldness. You're taking a walk, which is your go-to excuse to get some fart good farts out when you see Joy and Scott. Looks like they're wandering around with cameras and taking pics. Hmm, Scott, I'm trying to get a good shot of the extremely dead possum over there, but I can't get the focus quite right. Any ideas? Hey, Scott, you can make an appearance. Uh, Coach always says that you gotta stay focused. The whole game, even it. You think there might be a bone buried under the field? Does that help? You've gotten a sufficient amount of farts out for the time being, so you wander over and ask what these two hotties are up to. Now, I did a gameplay with some friends that wasn't recorded, and I, Polly and Scott were just talking about Monster Camp. Yeah, we decided to skip the romantic shenanigans and just go in the meteor showers, friends. Yeah, only a thirsty... Uh, idiot would spend the whole time trying to <laughs> romance someone. Oh, Scott and I are just taking pictures for our photography class. Photography keeps me slightly distracted from the constant, never-ending stress of my world-saving duties. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember this happening. Maybe this will happen. And I love taking pictures. You know the feeling when someone pats your head for being a good boy? If you take a picture, you can remember it forever instead of just 15 minutes. What are you doing here, DF? You're not by any chance, here to follow us around and try to get one of us to sleep with you. You start nervously sweating. You're sure, Joy, that you're not here to increase your stats until one of them agrees to vote. You're here because you, you, um, <laughs> well, because you also love photography. Yeah, let's go with that. To prove it, you whip out your phone and show them all the pics you've taken of your semi-new body. Wait, we're doing photography. That's a phone. Phones don't make pictures. Don't worry, it's an easy mistake to make. I get my camera confused with calculus all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You show Scott that your phone can indeed take pictures. You open your camera app, snap a picture of his tail, even though it's wagging a lot, and show it to him. Whoa, a phone can take a picture? And it can also take a call? I didn't know that one thing could do two things. Scott, you sweet, sweet boy. Do you have, you're obviously some kind of photography expert. You gotta check out my technique and give me coach tips to improve my form. Scott shows you enjoy his picture-taking technique, which is mostly just pointing at shiny objects silently and throwing his camera at them. You tell Scott that you've got a game-changing tip for him. He just needs to press a big, black, shiny shutter button on the camera. That'll up his game for sure. 
Wait a second. Scott, have you not been pressing the shutter button? We've been out here for three hours. Goddess, no wonder you got an incomplete on our last assignment. Wait, so if you had the big button, the camera actually takes the picture? Before, I was just politely asking the camera to take it. My mind is blown. Oh, Scott. Well, even I have to admit, that was a pretty helpful piece of advice. I'm almost convinced you're not just here to sleep with one of us. So if you're really such a big fan of photography, surely you can give me some pointers too, right? I'd love to learn from your expertise. She's got you there. Uh-oh, Joey's calling your bluff. Yeah, and she'll be way less easy to impress than Scott. You don't think of Vincer, you're a real pro, or you'll yet again be exposed as super horny. So do you have, why don't you tell me, what's your biggest photography secret? I cannot disclose photography's biggest secret, Joy. I'd be betraying photography's trust. Oh, so you know about the button to take pictures. What about this other secret button? It's to take better pictures? Oh, phew. Oh, very funny. Obviously, there's no secret button on every camera. You're clearly just saying dumb nonsense to try and impress us. You insist that there is a secret button on the camera just for taking better pictures. If you find the secret button, you just got to gently tickle the camera's prostate and... Whoa, I found the secret button. <laughs> what? Oh my goddess, are you serious? Wait, do cameras have prostates? You compliment Scott and his tickling technique. Joy's camera is a little shy. Camera shy. <laughs> but after a very mature discussion about boundaries, it opens up and reveals its secret button. Oh my god. That was fun. It kind of made me feel some strange new feelings. Hell yeah, let's do secret button photography. Woo! You, Scott, and Joy all take tons of pictures using the secret button on the camera. Due to the button's technological advances, they all come out awesome. Joy takes a picture of a tree, and the secret button infuses a photo with the smell of the tree itself. It's so metaphorical. What is happening here? Scott snaps a picture while pointing his camera directly at the sun. It ends up looking like a professional nature landscape photo. Big default computer background energy. Finally, you take a picture with Joy. Secret button really makes it look like you two have hot sexual chemistry, like two tapples mating under the gaze of a horny biologist. Tapples are babies, though. Wow, these photos are so evocative, don't you think? They're gorgeous. Yeah, this is the first photo that I've ever taken that's been in focus and not a picture on my thumb. Professor Lensbottom is going to be so proud of us. Thanks for all your help, DF, and thank you for your help, Secret Button. He's right. You were really helpful. Thanks. And I'm sorry I was so quick to dismiss you at first. I can't believe it, but you were actually right. I'm not used to being so competent. I guess we're going for joy this round. Oh, hell yeah. The ten years you spent studying in that secret photography dojo really paid off. You gained two Flickr followers along with two smarts and one fun. Because I can't choose who I'm going to romance until later. Oh, well. Definitely need out the charm. Now, day at the Camp Dome, you all play the classic children's game, The Floor is Lava. With a twist, the floor is literally lava. You're all hopping here and there, trying to survive the dangers of, you know, lava. But then one of your teammates falls. He's sinking into the lava, during his, dying a slow, agonizing death. You offer him, but it's too late. Before disappearing under the hot lava, he whispers his last words. DF, you, your hair looks great. It does. You gain two charm from a nice compliment. Wow. Later, you're looking around for Joy. You just finished reading her copy of How to Be a Slightly Better Friend Despite Your Suffocating Horniness by Dr. Hugh G. Boner, M.D. You see Joy nearby, she's quietly reading, and you learn that it's rude to interrupt, so you give the book back and turn to go. Yay, you show basic respect to your friend. Wait, DF, that's it? You're just gonna leave without introducing any absurd, high-stakes shenanigans? Okay, maybe I'll keep playing. This is interesting. Come on, don't be shy. You're always inciting the anger of dark, evil forces. And I always save you, thanks to my magical powers and impeccable leadership skills. You tell Joy that you don't really have any urgent misadventures going on. Ever since you stabbed that ghost in the face last week, things around camp have been pretty chill. Oh, well, I guess that's good. I mean, it's not like I was hoping you were possessed by an eldritch horror, so I could cleanse you and save the world from a primal evil. In fact, I'm happy that you're not interrupting me with life or death narrative stakes. I was technically supposed to take this summer off, so I guess I'll uh, relax. Joey's so cute and also a low-key workaholic. 
You remind her that she defeated Dimitri and Morty's plan to poison the water supply last week. That was enough heroics, right? Diaf, you're totally right. Dimitri and Morty are my closest official nemeses. We should head over to Camp Rival Camp right away. We can spy on Dimitri and Morty and make sure they're not plotting the end of the world or the rise of the dark side or anything like that. Great idea, DF. Not what you meant, but whatevs. You follow Joy to Camp Rival Camp and you two hide out in the bushes. Right away, you spot Dimitri and Morty. Oh my gosh. Okay, this, this is worth it if we get to see that adorable picture. Check out those fiendish, muscular villains. They're clearly planning some kind of evil scheme. Just look at them. They're using that sword to... Make adorable origami animals? Yep, Morty and Dimitri are doing some adorable and maybe deadly arts and crafts. Before long, they move on to their next BFF activity. <laughs> oh, that is cute! Oh, God. This is, <laughs> I have a feeling some one of these are going to be in my thumbnail. Grooming an alpaca. Dimitri put a party hat and a poncho on an alpaca. Alpaca and Morty is busy weaving beads into its mane. They are having so much fun. This is such a wholesome bromance. I say bromance because it sounds like they're just being BFFs because Dimitri... I mean, Dimitri is with the prince and they do have an open relationship, but it looks like they're just being BFFs. Interesting, though, because they're both pretty hypersexualized. Okay, I know it doesn't look like they're being evil, but what if that's a sacrificial alpaca? Maybe they're... I can't... Why can't I say alpaca today? Maybe they're preparing to sacrifice it in some kind of evil ritual. <laughs> then you watch as these two shirtless goofballs cook up some homemade raspberry jelly. Somehow they fashion some fancy jelly beards and they wear the beards? Sticky, but sexy. Oh, my God. This is so frustrating. I can't tell if these two are doing evil deeds or if they're just being stupid. And I'll look like an idiot if I intervene when there's no evil to defeat. It's like that Powerpuff Girls episode with the prank calls. And they were interrupting all the villains when they were just chilling. I can't believe I'm saying this, but TF, what do you think? How do we tell if Morty and Dimitri are actually being evil? Dimitri and Morty are idiots, and stupidity is basically a different language. Hire an interpreter who is fluent in stupidity. Disney movies taught you well. If these two are evil, they'll burst into a classic villain song sooner or later. <laughs> yes! An evil villain song? I don't know, DF. That sounds kind of off-genre, but I guess Dimitri and Morty skew more musical than I do. Oh, I can't wait for this one. Wait, holy shit. I think I hear highly singable music? Where's that music even coming from? Let's go check it out. You enjoy stealthily sneak closer. Sure enough, you catch Dimitri and Morty breaking out into a classic Disney villain song. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, let's be prepared here. Uh, not be prepared. Different song. Gosh, it disturbs me to see you, my friend, covered with raspberry jam. But I know that these afternoon arts and crafts are a critical part of our plan. Yes, my dear friend, it may seem unwise, spending all day in such mirth. But I promise these beards, this llama, these cranes, will help us to conquer the earth. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, how's it going? <laughs> oh, great. How's this for go? Drew will rule the whole world with our cruelty and show off our fuckable bods. We'll shatter our foes with our washboard arms and then make them massage our quads. No one's wicked like us. No one's sticked like us. No one's slimy and cruel and big dicked like us. Oh, God. Well, these guys are definitely evil. You gotta stop them. But first, you wait until they finish their song. Interrupting a musical number is just rude. Sorry, I may have messed up the third verse. As soon as they complete their final crescendo, you and Joy jump out of the bushes. It's time for some motherfucking heroism. Gotcha, boys. I know you two are playing a very evil and very convoluted scheme. So, DF and I are just going to vanquish you now and save you the trouble. Psh. 
Yeah, right. We're not evil. We're just sexy. You only think we're evil because we're so physically attractive. Happens to me all the time because of my visible cum gutters. To be fair, your cum gutters are impressive. Ew. But I'm completely sure that you two are in the midst of an evil plot. I heard your little song just now, so don't try to deny it. Curses! We've been foiled again by the classic villain trope of singing a song that communicates your evil intentions. Damn, my perfect pitch and love of rhyming! You enjoy Beat the Shit Out of Dimitri and Morty. It's violent and not funny at all. Are they dead? Who cares? Yay, yeah, you won! Phew, that was fun. Now that I've gotten some work done, I can finally relax. Why don't we spend the day together, DF? Just the two of us. Oh, God. This is gonna be so fun to, to edit later. You hang out with Joy all day, and you two end up singing a romantic ballad in a paddle boat on the lake under the starlight. The dope duet gets you true creativity and one smart. You're gonna kiss the girl. Oh, I love you, game, for this. I mean, my name's Sissy Fanatic. I guess we're just going for joy here. You head over to the campfire to roast the exotic bug shish kebab you lovingly crafted when you see Joy and Calculester writing in a notebook. We could put fire extinguishers under every log so responsible campers can stop reckless ones. Or we can put the campfire out immediately to prevent the need for fire extinguishers at all. Oh, hello, friend EF. Friend Joy and I were brainstorming ways to make the campfire a safer place for all of our friends and frenemies. Of course, normally a campfire poses limited dangers, but since this is Camp Spooky, friend Ma Milo came dangerously close to the campfire the other day, dragging several campers with them to get a perfect fireless selfie. The prank masters have been known to pop in now and then, and they definitely stole some fire in a jar last time. Who knows what they did with it? I do. I do know what. I do know what. It was not safe. And of course, there's Damien being Damien. Need we an explanation? And friend Dahlia being friend Dahlia. <laughs> so with all that in mind, we need a way to get people to be safe around the fire. Or make the fire itself safer. No, Calculester, I told you. Fires don't hurt monsters. Monsters hurt monsters. Oh, no. This is going to be a gun control thing. And it's going to be totally skewed. Well, that logic doesn't add up completely. And you suspect it's just Joy being a little bit tipsy and not thinking things through. Time to find a better solution. You're right, Calculester. Let's seal off the fire with a firewall. Hey, Joy, let's assign and implement a fire harassment seminar to teach our fellow campsters to respect fire's personal space. Oh, dang. That's actually super smart. And maybe they'll be able to translate those skills into their relationships to other monsters, too. Judging by past behavior and learning curves, friend Joy, my calculations indicate a near zero chance of this. A girl can dream, Calculester. A girl can dream. Drew, I forget because I cannot dream. I can only power down or go into sleep mode. But alas, this does not bring me dreams. Given our classmates' general lack of common sense, I think we should come up with some simpler, clear guidelines. Our seminar subsections can include a module called Where to Touch a Fire. The answer is nowhere. We can also give helpful tips like fire burns, and a fire cannot give consent, so please keep your genitalia away from it. Oh! Surely, organic life forms must know that their much-needed reproductive organs should not be placed near a substance so hazardous to them, you'd think. Apparently, you haven't spent nearly enough time with Damien. But I think with these instructions, even our most reckless classmates could su should successfully learn the importance of respecting a fire's personal space. Great idea, DF. You're welcome in my personal space anytime. Hey, hey, hey. That's consent. By which, I mean, you can sit next to me around the campfire. For now, okay. Fire, fair. Joy winks at you, and the feeling it gives you is warmer than the glow from any campfire. Okay. Joy's pretty. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm making my choices. The weekend is finally here, which means it's time to visit your favorite feline friend, one. Hola, hola. Welcome back. Here for another free drink? Go nuts. Just remember to drink these dubious concoctions responsibly. 
All right, uh, saving the flax genie for later. Um, 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 um. I forget what some of these do. Um, man, shows you how long it's been. I forget what some of these do. I do need to increase fun, so. Yeah, yeah, sex on the beach. Ah, sex on the beach. I brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try. I assure you it'll be a fun ride. Still hard to believe you drink that. Good luck, I guess. Let's just boost some more stats and see where we go from here. Okay. <laughs> I, it was not what I intended, but this this round's fun so far. We did a Disney villain song. It's boost charm. That day at the camp dome, you play Never Have I Ever Extreme. Each t every time someone mentions something you've done, you have to cut a finger off. No. But besides the finger part, this is finally a great time to brag about all the cool legal things you've done. I mean, we're already a Frankenstein monster. You're the first out, and while they're sewing your digits back on, you get to regale your friends with stories about how you robbed a bank while wearing your grandfather's skull as a hat. You're so cool. Also, they sew you too charm to your left hand on mistake. Afterwards, you hang out with your number one summer crush, Joy. It's national, fondly reminisce upon your past day. So she's flipping through the fix on her phone with you. Ooh, this was back from season three, right after we beat that mutant spider. Faith looks so cute in this one. And look at that awesome Fleetwood Mac t-shirt I'm wearing. That t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stevie Nicks blessed it herself. Whatever happened to that shirt? Did I sacrifice it to the goddess or something? Hmm. Oh, wait. I remember exactly where I left it. Fuck. Joy makes a mysterious phone call. She starts asking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt, but the person on the other end of the line is obviously not being chill about it. Listen, XRX, I know things ended badly between us, but can you please just give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically remember leaving it in your evil layer. Oh, boy. I know you know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your layer. No, there is definitely no need to discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly, a magical porter opens. An objectively sexy centipede person emerges, and they are giving off palpably villainous vibes. Oh, we're going for this secret ending? Okay. Joy, baby, I've come to speak with you in person, just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as that day I wrapped you on my bug silk. Oh, God. No, Axorax, I specifically said I did not want to talk to you in person. You're doing that thing again where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. Ugh, DF, meet my ex, Axorax. They're a magical, evil centipede person I defeated back in Season 3. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind control everyone in Philadelphia and try to make all the citizens jump into a pit of centipede venom. Oh, you make me sound so evil, Joy. But that's all in the past now, gorgeous. We should focus on the present. And this very important t-shirt debacle. Why don't we ditch the third wheel? You and I can go out for coffee and talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic dinner. Do any restaurants around serve pre-chewed aphids? Ugh, Axorax, if I go get one coffee with you, do you promise to immediately hand over the shirt? Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Oh, yes. Let me check the inside of my carapace. Oops, silly me. Looks like I forgot to bring the shirt. Guess we'll have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. I told you so many times that I'm not okay with us hanging out because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle, but fuck it. I really want that t-shirt. Isn't that smart at all? Oh, it's over a t-shirt. Axorax is stressing out your potential thick goth GF. Unacceptable. Get that Fleetwood Max t-shirt for joy by any means necessary. 
set up a black market exclusively for buying a and selling Joy's belongings. You'll trade for the t-shirt. Hmm. Call the police and send out an amber alert for the t-shirt. Axorus can't hide from the power of vigil of a vigilant community. An amber alert seems like it might be a waste of public emergency services, but it's better than watching Axorus drink coffee through their pro a boskis. Let's go. You and Joy go to the police station and file a missing t-shirt report. You describe the t-shirt. Beloved vintage, smells like heavy metal concerts, and Bernie Sage. The police officers are super concerned. Did you say this was a Fleetwood Mac shirt and it was vintage? This is serious. We're assigning our best detective to the case. Yes, yes, it's me, Detective McBooty. We're going to find that missing shirt, officers. Remember the first 24 hours are the most crucial to keep this case from going cold. I've sent out alerts to all the local cell phones. We'll be conducting interviews with t-shirt lovers in the area, and community search parties will begin immediately. Wait, I appreciate the help, but you're misunderstanding. We already know who has a Fleetwood Mac shirt. It's my, my ex, Axe Rax. A true detective never works off assumptions. We will get your t-shirt back through the power of deduction and evidence, my dear Joy. <coughs> Six hours later, Detective McBooty concludes that, yeah, Axrax definitely has a t-shirt, duh. You there, bug person, Detective McBooty, FBI, stop right there, hand over the Fleetwood Mac shirt, and we'll escort you to prison. Wait, are you implying that I'll be taken to prison for stealing a single t-shirt? My god, the criminal justice system is even worse than everyone says it is, yeah. Oh, well, you're going to prison because you're, you mind control Philadelphia and you keep dissolving humans in your vague bug venom, but chat stealing is also a serious crime. Ugh, you know I can open magical portals, yes? Your human jail will not hold me, McBooty. Tell it to the judge, buggy. Ha, I got my shirt back and I also got to see my ex led away in handcuffs. It's officially a great day and it's all thanks to you, DF. God, Joy is so fucking cute. She wears a t-shirt for the rest of the day. You know what we get to see what it looks like? Turns out, it really is blessed by Stevie Nicks. Stevie's blessing gets you three bonus. Sweet! Okay, um, let's... Zip-a-ba. Today, you're playing the most dangerous camp dome game of all, Charm Wars. The rules are simple. You must gain charm by the end of the round, or you will die instantly. B DF, you better earn some charm quick, like in the next 10 seconds, or you're going to fucking die. Holy shit, earn some charm already. Oh, okay, thank God. You just earned two charm. Phew, that was way too close. You're walking around camp trying to forget the heinous crimes you committed in your sleep last night when you run into joy. Oh, hey, DF. Let me guess. You got some kind of goofy, unexpected problem going on. You need my help to fix it? All right, I'll help you. Technically, I'm supposed to take a break from work this summer, but hey, I'm a witch battling the forces of evil. If duty calls, I have to answer. You shrug, you've got nothing, not even a small-scale, low-stakes dilemma for Joy to help with. It's basically been a normal day so far, which almost never happens at this camp. Huh? Nothing at all? Well, obviously it's good when people don't have problems, and I don't need to be super useful and competent all the time anyway. I can just sit here and read my book and absorb the information. And that's how people relax, so that's what I'll do too. Here I go to read. 30 seconds go by. Oh my goddess, there has to be something perilous around here. Come on, it's, not, it's totally not just me struggling to actually relax. Don't you feel that, DF, that dark evil force lurking somewhere in the shadows? I sense an ancient evil ready to strike me whenever I let my guard down. Nice try, ancient evil. Not this time. I know exactly how to deal with this. I'll consult with my ever-powerful, ever-wise spiritual mentor, the goddess. Plus, it'll give me a chance to work on my interplanar communication spells. Joy spends 45 minutes on an extremely complex spell. There are quite a few esoteric components, and she ends up using your pubic hair and belly button lint as channeling tools. Ah, perfect. The spell is ready. Here I go. Goddess of Light, your ward summons you. Grant me your wisdom, heavenly goddess. Joy's spell works perfectly, and she summons a being of pure, divine light and femininity, who is clearly in the middle of taking a bu bubble bath. Ooh, we are going to see the picture. Oh, Joy, good to see you. Although I'm pretty certain I asked you not to commune with me during bath time. What's up, girl? Goddess of light, your divinity smiles upon down upon me. I call for you in this hour of need, as I have sensed an ancient evil gathering its power to bring about the final calamity. 
OMG. Joy, I promise you, there's no mysterious danger lurking around trying to ruin your summer relaxation. You're a total workaholic. Take a break. Surely you jest, Divine Light, for it is my sacred duty to protect the world against the forces of evil. And I would totally never manufacture a catastrophe just to feel useful or anything. Sure. Well, I just use my omniscient powers to scan all the universe, and it seems pretty chill. Guess I'm going to enjoy the day by relaxing in my bath. What about you, Joy? Psst, DF, isn't the goddess acting weird? What if some ancient evil fooled her into letting her guard down? There's got to be some kind of danger here, right? Seems like Joy won't be satisfied until there's a disaster she can quickly and competently disarm. Quick, find something dangerous for Joy to deal with. The dangers of a poor skin routine. The goddess is, what, like several millennia old? That skin won't care for itself. The dangers of ever-growing atheism among the younger generations. Every second, fewer and fewer people give a fuck about the goddess's divinity. You blurt out that improper skin care is the greatest danger to all beings, including literal gods. Skin care? Well, my skin is made of magic. I'm pretty sure I don't have to worry about mortal stuff like aging, right? Do I look crusty or something? Wait, I think DF may be right. Just think about it, goddess. We have to return to the Holy Tree of Life once every ten years to renew our powers, right? Well, if we have to renew our magic powers and your skin is made of magic, don't you think you'll have to renew your skin too? Oh, myself. I literally never even thought about it that way. That makes so much sense. Wow, I feel like such an idiot. Wow, we're getting so many cool little <laughs> bonus images today. I'm loving it. I haven't washed my face since, like, I spilled a drop of my blood on Earth to create all living things. Okay, Joy, I give in. I totally need your help with this. Fret not, Divine Goddess of Light. Your most devoted follower is here for you. Tatcha just launched a new line of products specifically for skin that's made of magic. DF and I will go pick you, you up some samples. Just one question. What are you biggest what are your biggest skin related concerns right now? Okay. So I think my biggest thing is getting enough moisture. I get kinda oily T zone though. Oh, and if there's a flare up of evil on earth, I tend to break out on my chin. You enjoy going on a divinely ordained trip to Sephora to pick up some holy face wash, consecrated moisture, and a skin toner made of unicorn tears. Divine Goddess, we have returned from your quest victorious. I have here a humble offering, Tatcha's Divine Lady Skincare Line. Complete with the super limited edition All Seeing Eye Mascara. These look so fetch, and they're cruelty free, which is nice because my divine form rejects all kinds of cruelty and injustice. This day was bananas, like better than the day I vanquished the followers of the false fate from altering the primary timeline. You're the best disip disciple ever. Thanks, babe. Aw, you're welcome, my divine goddess of light. I'm humbled that I could be useful to you. That makes me really happy. Speaking of usefulness, I probably would have been super bored today if it wasn't for you, DF. Thanks for everything. The goddess is so happy that she bestows eternally perfect skin on both of you and joy, and she throws in two charm and one smart stew. Well, this is a very interesting round. Alright. Let's just boost some stats to make sure we're good. Hi there, DF. I have a business proposition for you. Wow, if you had a nickel for every time a friend of yours proposed a business to you, uninvited. My idea is this. A magazine about Camp Scoop... Camp, camp, camp Scoopy. Camp Spooky. It will feature stories about your fellow campers' lives. Photography of your fellow campers frolicking. Salacious details about our fellow campers' innermost secrets. Okay. It's genius. No, the only problem is I need some groundbreaking gossip to get my publication off the ground. Something the other gossip reporters haven't gotten their greedy hands on yet. Would you know anything by chance? Ah, uh, fuck it. You always wanted to give an interview, and this might be your only chance. Let's gossip. Winston Churchill's dog, the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, a cockroach on so much LSD, a man claiming to be Nikola Tesla. And eh, let's go with the dog. Jack Black's presidency, 1930s Germany, the dimension where Avatar the Last Airbender is real. Ooh, or the Great Lizard Uprising of 2245. Type in your favorite band slash musician. Taylor Swift. Amazing! This will be our cover story for our debut issue, DF with the Saucy Secrets. I'm going to go do more sleuthing for stories. Catch you later. You've spread a particularly saucy rumor today. You can't wait to see how your friends mangle all the details. 
Holy crap, someone just told me the craziest thing about DF. You've got to hear this. According to what I've heard, DF is actually a time traveler sent from the future. They work for an agency tasked with destroying threats to the time stream across all eras and dimensions. DF's been on missions in all sorts of cool time periods. Their favorite era is the dimension where Avatar The Last Airbender is real, which is understandable. They have also collected a ton of cool souvenirs from every time period they have visited. Including David Bowie's favorite teddy bear, a medieval Starbucks Frappuccino from 18 BC, and even an autograph from Taylor Swift. I wonder why DF came to our time period. I heard it's to stop Winston Churchill's dog from enslaving the population of Earth, but that's probably just speculation. Wow. Whatever the reason is, you've got to admit, learning about all the time periods DS visited certainly casts them in a new light. It certainly does cast DF in a new light where they've gained four fun. So we. The weekend is finally here, which means it's time to visit your favorite feline friend, Juan. Hola, hola. Welcome back here for another free drink. Go nuts. Just remember to drink these dubious concoctions responsibly. All right. What do we got? I remember that one makes gay music. Let's just soak up the smarts. So, you want to drink a margarita, eh? To think that by drinking a brain, you'll absorb its smarts is a bit simplistic. But hey, it's what actually happens. All comes razor at its finest. This is the part where I leave before you pick all over me. Ciao! That day in Monster Scouts, you learn to make your very own clothes in the wild. Someone suggests a fashion show, so afterwards, you all put on your outfits and show them off. If you had known that, that would be the result, you probably would have made something other than a leaf and sick thong and vine woven nipple tassels. Uh oh. Needless to say, nobody will be forgetting your performance anytime soon. You gain two creativity. You're enjoying a romantic afternoon picnic with joy. You made sure that everything here was vegan, including the picnic basket and the blanket. Gotta say, DF, this is pretty impressive. I didn't know you could weave a blanket out of tofu fibers, but wait, wait, fuck, did it just start raining? Sun, inexplicable rain? Impossible. Al Roker promised it would be sunny today. But despite Al's prediction, a menacing storm rolls in. And a bolt of lightning strikes two feet in front of you. It's pretty scary. But the sexy, villainous, magical warlockess that steps out of the uh, lightning is even scarier. Joy, my old flame. My most powerful nemesis. Just seeing you fills me with lust and with blinding rage. Oh, goddess. Yeah, this is Salome, my ex-girlfriend. Salome, what are you doing here? We broke up ages ago, and I already defeated you in the season 5 finale. Ha! That's all lube under the bridge. I was stalking your bikini pics on Insta yesterday, and I saw a post in Axorax's feed. You were hanging out with that bug-faced buffoon. I'm filled with horny jealousy. Joy, if you wanted to have crazy, hot, lubed-up, rebound sex with an ex-lover, why didn't you call me? We were a lecture together, honey. Holy shit, it's none of your business, but I was not having rebound sex with Axorax. As usual, you are completely blinded by your own thirstiness. Oh, well, if you're not in the mood for rebound sex, we can have any kind of sex you want. Makeup sex, hate sex, break from doing your taxes sex. Anything you want, as long as it's sex. Listen, Salome, I'll admit that we had pretty insane sexual chemistry, but I called it off for a reason. It always gets way too messy too fast. Also, you're evil. Remember when you dressed up in that leather harness to distract me and your poisonous mist spell killed like 180 people? Yeah, I gotta pass on this. What a disappointment. I didn't want to do this, but I have no choice. I'm forced to use my secret weapon of seduction. Prepare yourself for... This foot massage coupon. You gave me some romantic coupons on your anniversary, and I've saved them all this time. Now I'm redeeming this coupon to completion. 
I cannot believe that I have to explain this to you, but romantic coupons are not legally valid, especially after a breakup. Duh, super duper duh. Ridiculous. There's no expiration date on this coupon, but I suppose it can be reasonable. I have a whole collection of coupons here. How about a trade-in? We could redeem this gastric cleaning coupon from my doc from my doctor, or this coupon for a free Brazilian wax, or this coupon for one free sexual yogurt experience from Yogurtland. Ugh, these coupons are definitely bullshit, but picking one is probably the fastest way to get Salome to leave us alone. DF, which coupon should I pick? Help Joy vanquish her evil ex-girlfriend by choosing the least horny coupon. Fortune favors a bold. Choose the Ask Me Any Question I'll Answer Truthfully coupon or pick the right leg coupon. It's the last coupon we need to form the legendary Exodia coupon. Ha, huh, the right leg coupon? Pathetic, you fool. That coupon is the most useless one in my whole collection. It's completely worthless, unless, of course, you happen to have the other four Exodia coupons. That's impossible. Victory will be mine! DF, what are you doing? We have to pick a coupon that'll somehow defeat Salome's horniness, or I might lose herself, lose myself to a raw sexual charisma. You've been waiting for this moment your whole life, and you won't back down. You grab the right leg coupon from Salome and pull out the coupons your grandpa left you. You channel a heart of the cards and draw the four legendary Exodia coupons. You finally have them, all five pieces of Exodia. Wait, no, DF, it's too dangerous. You have no idea what you're doing. I can't believe it, DF. It's the ultimate coupon strategy. Only the one true chosen coupon redeemer can summon a coupon this powerful. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> Suddenly, the ground shakes in devastating tremor, and Exodia, Pharaoh King of Power, emerges. He's a giant golden god, and he's ripped his AF. Salome! Exodia shouts. His voice sends a primal, mortal fear down your spine. It is I, Exodia, your ex-lover. Oh. Oh my goddess. Salome, did you fuck Exodia? Of course I did. Why do you think they call him Exodia? He's my ex, and I love puns. I accidentally cheated on him 18 times, and he got super pissed for some reason. So I banished him away. I sealed his soul into five coupons, never to be released. But DF has released me from my dark prison, and now I have a bunch of coupons from when we dated, and I want to redeem them! Ah, 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 ah. It's so stupid. Ha! Serves you right, Salome. You could use a taste of your own lube flavor medicine. But can you two handle this somewhere else? We're in the middle of a vegan picnic. Of course! Exodia respects personal space and boundaries! Shrieks Exodia. Wow, he's a pretty cool guy. Thanks for your help, DF. I don't think Salome is going to bother us anytime soon. Should we get back to our romantic picnic now? Yes, you made Joy super happy. You also gained three smarts from an unrelated shenanigan that happens after your picnic. Nice. An unrelated shenanigan. Um, okay. And this, okay. That day at the lake, you start a super soaker fight that turns into an all-out war. The enemy team manages to capture the northern section of the lake, but you take a few of their members hostage and learn their empire's weaknesses. You lead a full-scale infiltration. Thousands of soldiers get so get totally soaked, TM. It's a bloodbath. After several hours, the enemy team surrenders, and you gain two fun from the peace treaty. Yay! Later, you meet up with Joy. Oh, we get a bathing suit shot. She said she wanted to spend the day, just the two of us. Your knees feel weak, but that might be the polio you recently contracted. Uh, thanks for meeting me here, DF. I wanted to apologize for all the drama with my exes lately. You've been so understanding, and I've been doing some thinking. Before Joy can finish, a strange purple slime hole opens up in front of you. There are palpable waves of angst and resentment radiating from Alferman. Oh, shit. Right, this guy. Now I remember where. Okay, yeah, he appears in Monster Road Trip, and now I'm remembering where he originally came from. Well, well, well. If it isn't my ex girlfriend, Joy Johnson Johima, also known as the witch who drowned my heart in the obsidian ink of emotional betrayal. Hey, Gerard. It's nice to see you too, I guess. What are you doing here? And, uh, how are you doing? Psh. 
I'm not okay. I promise. This, remi- this just reminds me of, like, I feel like uh, the coven, they're, like, Charmed meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And you know how Buffy always gets into entanglements with such, with vampires? <laughs> In the dark of twilight, I was looking into the mirror, and I did not like what I saw. So I began online shopping for the darkest shade of black eyeliner available. And I saw this post on my Insta feed. You're with Salome now, Joy? Seriously? Yet another one of our, your ice-cold treasons of passion? Another stab to the heart! Holy shit, I'm this close to deleting my Instagram. Not that it's any of your business, Gerard, but no, I'm not with Salome. I didn't give her permission to post that. Whatever. You're just deceiving me. Again! It reminds me of when I was a young boy, and my father took me into the city to see a lying whore named Joy! Hey, even though this guy clearly has an amazing fashion sense, you gotta step in. You tell Gerard that he needs to be respectful to Joy, or you'll give him polio. You're defending this soulless wench? Eh, I don't like polio being used as a joke. My grandma had polio. Get your vaccines, people. Hear my tale of woe, idiot. I consumed 1,891 living souls and became the most powerful necromancer in the universe just to impress Joy. And she responds by getting all mad at me for killing innocents and then cheating on me with some two-bit horny warlockess. Joy is a cheater! Gerard, listen to me. I get why you're mad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I was wrong to cheat on you when we were dating and I'm sorry. But we dated a long time ago. It's been years since we broke up, and the coven defeated you. I think it's unhealthy that you're still completely fixated on this. And also, I would appreciate it if you could stop commenting cheating ho with a rotting black heart on everything I post. Block him! Hmm. Perhaps you're right. I haven't feasted on an innocent soul in many fortnights. It's not like me. I'm losing interest in my hobbies. Since you are the grand architect of my pain, I expect you'll have some method to sew my shattered psyche back together. Gaslighting! I guess it's the least I can do. DF and I will help you move on by... by... uh, Any ideas, DF? This is so painful. I've never been in a relationship, but I did have a to... I did have a a toxic family member who kind of treated me this way. Um, no romantic implications, just... (sighs) Get Gerard a date. Getting laid won't heal his broken heart completely, but hey, it's a great start. It's time to get even. Joy and Gerard should play Monopoly together, and Gerard should be allowed to cheat. Fair is fair. Monopoly? I don't know, DF. Cheating in a board game isn't really equivalent to cheating in a relationship. I don't know. I don't want to diminish Gerard's feelings. Psh, nonsense. Monopoly is a genius idea. Nothing is more cold and heartbreaking than Monopoly, capitalism's favorite board game. True, I played Catopoly the other day with my family. <laughs> it is pretty cold. You buy a copy of Monopoly, breakup edition, from Amazon, same day for delivery. Y'all start to play with the special house rule that Gerard can cheat as much as he wants. On your first turn, you get hit with some super nasty student debt loans and go bankrupt almost immediately. It's down to join Gerard. <laughs> for my next move, I shall employ my necromantic teleportation manic Jig, and move my little... Well, top hat, 18 spaces to the Pennsylvania Railroad. After robbing the bank, I have plenty of money to purchase this property, which means I own all four railroads! Tremble before me! Ugh, okay, it's my turn, and I rolled a four, so I pass go and get $200. Oh, ho, ho, I don't think so, Joy. My sources tell me that you rolled a three! You're going straight to jail, right where you belong! That is not even how the spaces are set up on Monopoly, but okay. Damn it, I realize he's allowed to cheat, but this is frustrating. I always lose when I pick the car. You play for four hours because Monopoly takes forever to finish. Yeah. Shit, well, I'm completely bankrupt and destitute. Poverty has crushed my spirit. You win, Gerard. Take that, Joy! I'm the capitalism king! You are ruined! Evil wins again! Mwahaha! Gerard is so excited about winning that he melts into a puddle of purple slime and disappears. You did it? Yay! Wow, that was the happiest I've seen Gerard in. Actually, that was the happiest I've ever seen him. And I've got to admit, Monopoly's a dumb game, but it actually hurt a little bit to lose so hard knowing that he was cheating the whole time. I guess that was the point, huh? Wait, did your dumb Monopoly idea actually help me become a better person? Huh, you're weirdly the best, DF. Thanks. I may have underestimated you. 
You spend the whole day with Joy. She ends up casting a healing spell on you. It cures your polio and gets you three charred. That's the magic of capitalism, baby. If only they were that easy to cure polio. Okay, well, I wasn't aiming for Joy, but I guess we ended up with the secret ending, which I'd already played before, but, like, but at least you got to see it. You go to check on your favorite witch. Hey, DF. What? You want to watch the meteor shower together? Uh, I'm grateful for all your help these past few days, but I never really imagined us in that way. But now that you bring it up, I've got to admit, I do like it quite a bit. I guess there wasn't that initial passionate spark, you know? Like a fire that lights in you in which you want to destroy someone but also fuck their brains out. It happened with Axorax, Salome, Gerard, Dimitri, Liam when he was Angelus. <laughs> oh, God, I get it, because Angelus, Angel, and Buffy. <laughs> hmm. Come to think of it, I sort of seem to have a pattern. And looking at it now, it doesn't seem super healthy. It doesn't. Do I always look for sexual partners in my enemies? Why? Looking at it from a distance, it seems like I sabotage myself, always entangling with evil people who don't exactly rhyme with commitment. But maybe I could break the cycle. Hmm, would you want to break that cycle with me? Do you even need to answer? That meteor shower arrives and you share it with joy. You wonder if you may live to become an evil ex. The thought frightens you, but it is there. What can we do besides try our best while we dive into the mortifying ideal of being known? The fear is there, real and blunt, but if we eventually fail, then in time, we will learn from every error. So tonight, you just hold hands with joy while gazing at the starry night and wondering about your shrewd, f sh sh shrewd shared future. It starts slowly, but it speeds up as she's excited by the prospects of a new, less complicated way of doing things. And you... You're deeply under her spell. Okay. Okay. This is not going to be in the thumbnail. You see her. You truly see her. A mesmerizing woman who loves unapologetically. A kind soul who's not afraid to lead with power and compassion. A low, poor, unfortunate soul. Sorry, that's what she looks like. A deeply complex person who carries the weight of the world on her shoulders. Someone that... In the moments when she alleviates herself from all those responsibilities, can also be the true embodiment of joy. Okay. I know I've done this one before, but uh, that's still pretty crazy. At least I got some new outs. Well, I, I did different outcomes this time, so they're sad. Yeah, we had all those new pictures too, <laughs> like the like, like the Disney Disney thing and 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 the goddess in the bath thing. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Okay, well, <laughs> hopefully at some point I will get one of those regular endings with Dahlia, and then I'd have all the regular endings with everybody. Disney fanatic two three six four out.